UFO News. Stay tuned for the following special presentation from 1220 at 103.7 FM KOFO. KOFO is your sports source for East Central Kansas and home of Ottawa University Brave Sports. And tonight we welcome you to the Kent Kessinger Show, live from Primetime Grill at Fusion Alley in South Ottawa. You can join us live at Primetime Grill during the show and enjoy their delicious Kansas cuisine while we share some time with OU Braves head football coach Kit Kessinger. Tonight's show is brought to you by Primetime Grill at 2204 South Princeton Circle Drive in South Ottawa and by Ottawa University. Now live from Primetime Grill, here's your host, Bob Johnson. Welcome in to the Kent Kessinger Show live from Primetime Grill here in South Ottawa. It is burrito night once again. The fantastic Poncho's Burrito is on special, and you can get that until close or they run out one of the two, but hopefully they don't run out. I mean, that would I, I don't think that's going to be an issue, but, uh, you know, come on down to, uh, to Primetime Grill and get yourself a nice burrito or any of their other fine uh, any of their other fine uh, food. Appetizers. Oh yeah, they got it all. We got it all. Appetizers. And and as an appetizer, we do have head coach Kent Kessinger with <laughs> us here yeah. this evening for the aforementioned Kent Kessinger show. And uh coach, thanks for joining us once again. You're welcome, Bob. Good to be here. It's good to have you here. And uh, unfortunately we have to mention that you guys lost on Saturday. Yeah. yeah. That was not kind of a bad thing that we wanted to see or and and have to talk about but I, again it was kind of some of the same uh same things that we talked about a week ago that uh hurt the braves this past week yeah we've uh we've hopefully started to figure out how to slow those down you know uh, particularly the penalties we just eat it's one of those things remember i tell you you know it's never as good never as bad when you get to go watch the film and everything like that um and there was a lot of good things that we did we just kind of shot ourselves in the foot there was i think three opportunities in the first half to have been scoring drives for us um a couple opportunities defensively to to stop them you know on long drives and we just you know we just didn't take advantage of it and those are things hopefully that are starting to to get into um, to our guys' mind. You know, I, I believe in repetition when it comes to doing things well. I don't necessarily feel that we need to keep on repeating bad things in order to learn that they're bad. No, and, and again, penalties, a, a huge issue this past week. And we talked about it in pregame because it was also going to be an issue for Avila, and they didn't disappoint themselves. There were 11 penalties on the uh, Eagles themselves. You had eleven, or not you personally, but the Braves. No, I had none. No, you I, had I man, none. I managed. I managed. Not like some of the coaches didn't fare so well in the KCAC, but um, with that. But anyways, kept your jersey clean on I that one. I did keep my jersey clean on that one. Yep, no cold penalties, no holdings, no so, personal foul. So at least the penalties were even, but uh, there were still some head scratchers. There were. Matter of fact, um, of the personal fouls that we that we received, uh, two of them. Two of them were completely wrong when you look at it on the film. And that's not the coach saying that they're wrong. And that's when you watch it, they said that um, that one of our offensive linemen hip tossed a guy when he was out of bounds. Actually, our guy got thrown. Our other was the guy that got hip tossed, but they called the penalty on us. Uh, imagine that it was on their sideline. Yeah. Um, second, second thing is we had a kid that did a really good job making a block you know it was before the whistle and he, he knocks the guy over and the official called him for taunting and said he stood over the guy well the guy grabbed his leg and you can see him grab the leg our guy's trying to pull off and the guy's grabbing his leg um and uh they threw the flag on us there too so they're two of the personal fouls that we had one of them was really big because it was the one that put us at second and 24 um early in the i think the second quarter um where we were going um going towards scorecock but um yeah so there was a couple of those 
So I want to get your opinion on this, and because this is going to dovetail a little bit. But uh, you talk about that penalty there where they were calling taunting. There was a lot of jawing going on out there, and on and, and both sides. I'm not going to just throw it all on Avila, but how, how can you arbitrarily pick one thing for taunting when you've got nothing but taunting going on? Yeah, I don't know. I, the game? I had I had one explanation to one of our personal fouls is that that one that they didn't call because they told me that the guy was retaliating to a blow that our guy had put on him. And I'm like, since the dawn of time when they put in personal fouls, it's always the guy that's second that gets caught. Always. That's a given. Yeah. It's a given. And they explain that one and say, no, 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 no. He was just retaliating. But, well, that's still a penalty. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, I look, I know I'm not the smartest football guy in the world, but I can obviously tell you that that would be a penalty. In coaching, in coaching from the from when I was a little kid, they always taught, told you that that if you retaliate, you're going to get caught and it's going to be a penalty. From the from the very first day that I ever learned football. Hey, did you ever get an explanation on the intentional grounding? Where ours, they said that we didn't have anybody in the area, and theirs, they told me that he was lucky. The 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 official came and told me. He goes, yeah, he was just lucky. There was a guy that was over there. I go, there's a guy on the eighth lane of the track? Because that's where the ball went. Oh, yeah, I know. He's right there. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. That isn't. I stopped. At that point, I didn't know what to do. But. So. Now the one that went against Ottawa, though there was the first in the one. Vicinity. The first one that we had, uh, the the first first it was grounding, absolutely. It was we didn't have a person in, in the area, and we weren't out of the pocket. Now, the second one that was later in the game, the rule is is that if you break outside the break outside the tackle box, you could throw the ball away. And we actually had a person nearby yes. in the area. I believe it was Daniel and, Johnson. Yeah. And we were outside the tackle box. So not only were we outside the tackle box where it's okay to ground, we did have somebody in the in the area. So if they didn't think that Dalen was in the nearest area or close enough to the spot, he was still outside the tackle box. All right. So yeah. So two weeks two weeks in a row we've had some interesting officiating, which was funny is the week the week ago when we had Southwestern those guys those guys um officiated uh the Tabor McPherson game and that's uh, I'll have to give my good friend Mike Gardner a hard time on this because we talk usually every week when it comes to ratings and stuff and <laughs> he got a bench penalty um <laughs> for telling the referee that he needs to blow the whistle because somebody was going to get hurt and that was that awful. The guy was awful. It was the same guy. I texted him when I saw it today. I was like, I sent him a message. I'm like, oh, you guys had those guys. No wonder you guys got a penalty. <laughs> They're terrible. Oh, uh, that's right. But anyways, it is what it is. You got to deal with what you got to deal with. And you know, our our issue is that we got to make sure that we play within ourselves to where we're not putting ourselves in situations to have those penalties. We're going to take our first break right here. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, about some of the play from Saturday. I especially want to get into some of the quarterback stuff because I think we started to see uh, some positives yeah. from, uh, from the quarterback play. Uh, Caleb Kessinger was starting to look more comfortable back there when he had opportunities to uh, throw the ball. Uh, of course, Eugene Santerling came in and, and did well for his time in there. So we'll talk a little bit about that when we come back. I uh, want to let you know we will join the Royals game in progress at the top of the hour. Oakland right now with a one nothing lead over the Royals. And uh, Tuesday night high school football, or a makeup from last Friday. Burlington is up 16 nothing at the half against Santa Fe Trail. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we will talk more Ottawa University Braves football, and we'll start getting you ready for Saturday's contest with the McPherson Bulldogs. You're listening to us on 1220 and 103.7 FM KOFO and KOFO.com. I shouldn't have to tell you this, but the big game isn't nearly as much fun when you have to watch it on a small screen. So make a play for Ottawa's Primetime Grill. 
With more than 40 screens, dozens of meal options, and a full-service bar, it's the place to be from the first pitch to the last call. And you don't have to watch alone. Check out the party rooms at Primetime Grill that you can combine and hold as many as 100 hungry fans. Take a time out from that small screen you're watching now and check out primetimegrill.com for room rental and package details. For game time, it's primetime. 132 conference championships, 146 NAIA scholar teams, 43 NAIA national tournament appearances, and 237 All-Americans. Ottawa University has a long and rich tradition of Braves athletes that continue to compete at the highest level of competition, utilizing state-of-the-art facilities, accomplished coaches, and a spirit that only comes from wearing the black and gold. Push yourself to limits you never imagined as a student athlete at Ottawa University. Visit ottawa.edu slash O-U-K-S. If you owe the IRS back taxes, then get ready to pay up. The IRS has giant private collection agencies actively tracking down folks who owe the IRS. So if you think dodging them was stressful in the past, it's going to get a whole lot tougher. Optima Tax Relief has this advice. Don't wait. Solve your tax problems now before it's too late. Optima Tax Relief works to stop the demand letters, stop the aggressive collection actions, and stop the IRS collectors from targeting you. Ask Optima about the Fresh Start Initiative, one of the biggest breaks the IRS has ever offered. If you qualify, you could save thousands, and nobody knows this program better than they do. Optima is A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, and they get results, having resolved over a billion dollars of tax debt for their clients. Get a fresh start. Call today for your free consultation. Call 800-348-0269. 800-348-0269. 800-348-0269. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Hi, I'm Laura Howard, Secretary of the Kansas Department for Aging and Disability Services. In Kansas, there are more than 540,000 people on Medicare, and each day, nearly 10,000 new people enroll nationwide. While Medicare enrollment can seem daunting, it doesn't have to be. That's where SHIC, or the Senior Health Insurance Counseling for Kansas program, comes in. The SHIC program provides seniors across Kansas trusted and unbiased help about Medicare benefits. SHIC counselors provide all the information and options available so you can make an informed decision about your Medicare coverage. We look forward to helping you navigate your way to a Medicare plan that is right for you. The number to call to find your local SHIC counselor is 1-800-860-5260. Sponsored by the Kansas Department for Aging and Disability Services and Administration for Community Living, Department of Health and Human Services and aired in cooperation with this station. Welcome back. It's the Kent Kessinger Show on 1220 at 103.7 FM KOFO and KOFO.com. You know, you can order online. If you don't want to come and eat here, which I, I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you wanted to take it home, you could go to primetimegrill.com and you could order online there. You could also call in at 785 242 PTG1 or 7841 if the, the letters on the phone throw you off or anything like that. Or you can just say, hey Siri, call primetime. Oh, look. Cool. It, it, there we go. So, see, hey, Siri is always a great uh, great thing to do there. <laughs> so, uh, Siri popped in. Sorry, Apple. So hopefully that's not a trademark violation there. Uh, while we're in the break, we got had a, had a question come in from a, an LJ asking, uh, you know, in some places that there might be fines and such for uh, talking bad about the officials. In the KCAC, are those fines like a can of Diet Pepsi or a handwritten apology? It's a, yeah, probably. So, or are there, is there anything at all like that? Or yeah. is it just a hearty reprimand? It's a hearty reprimand, I'm sure. So that's a good, there. so that there's the answer to a question that was sent in. So there yeah. we go. Thank you. Um, we left off talking about uh, the, the passing game for Ottawa and started to see some positives and some momentum and, and, and we'll start with Caleb Kessinger uh, finished at 7 of 16 but had some had some nice throws was and was able to uh, move the offense down especially to lead them lead Ottawa to the first score in the in the second quarter 
Yeah, you know, uh, I think that the quarterbacks are getting settled in a little bit to be able to play a little bit more pitch and catch. And, you know, it's one of the things that, you know, we try to teach them to be able to do. And I think that they're, you know, now that we're getting into the third week of the season, they're, they're starting to get it. Um, just to play a little bit, you know, a pitch and catch to make sure that we're, um, you know, that we're reading our reads. And, and that's one of the things that usually in the first couple of weeks and even in the game that we had this weekend that we we're still, you know, we were having a, we were, we were making sure that we were working through it. Um, you know, the thing that we, that I talked about after the game that we just got to be able to do is make them feel comfortable back there. And I think that they're, we're, we got to do some things to shore up our protections to make sure that we're doing that. And I think that they're starting to get it. Um, you know, Eugene came in as well, and, and he did a pretty good job with it. You know, and, and I think our receivers are running the right routes right place. So we just got it. We just got to make it more consistent all the way across. Uh, and that's uh, you brought up Eugene. He, he came in and sparked a little bit of a. Uh, a little bit of a run there in, in the uh, fourth quarter. James Reeder, by the way, you know, he came in and ran pretty well. But, again, I think we, when you take a look at between the quarterback play and, of course, the running game struggling, it, it, the, it's, again, the, the line. you got to get some consistency from that O-line. And uh, giving up six sacks was, was not exactly the way to get that done last week. No, and, and – most of those you know there's times where you have coverage sacks and that sort of thing it was it was just not you know not getting you know our right techniques you know there's you know times where we're you know coaching offensive line over the years where i've coached offensive line guys is you know they're doing something technically that's probably putting them in the wrong position like they're shooting their head and gives a chance for a defensive lineman to be able to to grab and do a swim move or do a rip move or do something like that and and some of them some of them are 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 still young and learning you know particularly in our interior they're still kind of young they're in a, you know they're in their second year you know in the program for the most part of playing you know so whether it, you know it was at the center of the guard spots those are our youngest our oldest guys are on our outsides and that's usually where we haven't had too much of the the trouble but it's it's technically getting into the right spot and continuing to work on them. And, and, you know, the nice thing is, is we try to spend some time going over, um, or excuse me, we, we, we spend time, you know, actually going good on good, you know, so our offensive line and our defensive line spends a lot of time going up against the Jacob Garcia's, you know, that we have on our team, you know, the guys that are, that are pretty well versed at doing their position and, and those are things that are hopefully are going to speed up the learning curve for some of these young guys. And is it something that you've seen progressing at, from the start of camp to where we are now? Do you see those improvements? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you always wish that they would be a lot faster, you know, and that sort of thing. But, it, you know, building an offensive, like, say, an offensive line, for example, is – is an adage that or an axiom that coaches have used in the years is that you take five pennies and you got to get them to develop into being a nickel it's still five cents any way you look at it um, but you take the five individual pennies and you want them to be able to work as one one group and that's where you get the um the nickel adage and that's the thing that at times you know we're playing like a nickel and at times we're playing it like five pennies and that's where we just got to be able to, to continue that continuity. And hopefully that you begin to see it click a little bit, a little more uh, with, as, as things go on. But, at, you know, now we're at a point getting to a point in the season where uh, the newness of the season is, is gone. And so it, 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 there's the expectations are a little bit different. Yeah. And we've played some pretty good competition too. I mean, yeah. you played the number 24, 25, uh, wherever they were at, at that point, um, Southwestern and, and Avila was 21. And now, now I want to say they're like 18 and 19, something like that in the nation, I, because I, I believe, um, Bethel's at 10 and, um, Avila and South, Western are like right next to each other, or it's Avila and Kansas Westland, or something like that. It's it's still they're all in the top twenty in the nation. So I mean we, we've played 
two out of our three games and two our two contests that we've had against KCAC teams have been really against good competition. So, um, you know, they've been tested for sure. They've definitely been tested. Defensively for Ottawa, it, uh, is it fair to say that they were maybe put in some unfair situations in the game on Saturday? Um, I don't know. Um, the I don't know of unfair situations. I'm trying to figure. You know, there's some penalties that where we could have got them off the field. That that's that's one we got to go over, and that which led to some long longer drives. We did have one special teams miscue. Yeah. Um, that uh, it almost turned out to be a a tremendous play by Isaac Gibson. He's he's one of the uh, shield guys. Um, and a guy came around, came around the shield, and he's the middle guy. And the punt got kind of got blocked, and he's kind of, you know, Johnny on the spot catches it and within a yard of getting the first down, which we, I've never seen anything like that before. So I didn't know if we could even even do it. Um, <laughs> but they seemed to think that it was okay. And I'm like, all right, great. Um, but uh, I, I've not ever seen that in all my years that type of a play on a on a punt. But uh, but that was one that gave him a short field. But we ended up, we ended up, I think, stopping him on that drive. It, it was just some of those other third downs and stuff where they got to be kind of long, and we continued the drives, and that uh, that gave him some gave him some big plays. Well, it it looks like just taking a look, you know, on they did a much better job of, of getting off the field on third down this past week than they did the previous Particularly week. Particularly in the first half. Yeah. In the second half, I think we got a little worn down. I mean, the run game really started to take its toll um, on us. And I'll tell you what, that running back, Malik Nesbitt, yes. he, is, he is a very good back. I think I said it after the game that he is a really, really good back. And he's thick. He's got muscles everywhere, and he's, he's a load. And he was making some – when you watch it on film, some of the cuts that he was making was just tremendous. And, and it's, it, I mean, that's tough to defend. It is. You know, the thing is, is, you know, he's got good speed to the outside. And so you, you, you kind of get, you kind of get baited into the situation to where you need to come, you know, you're, you're trying to get to the outside, but you need to tempo the back. You know, the coaches are telling you tempo the back, tempo the back. So he doesn't come back on you and, and we'll force things in and, but then you start doing too much. And that's one of the things that I think that both sides of the football and um, particularly is we've got to, got to be able to stay, you know, stay in our, in our wheelhouse, stay in our kind of our lane and, and do what we're supposed to do. Because when we try to do somebody else's job, then that's where we usually turn into something that's going to happen poorly. And is that just continuing to learn the system and know your spots? That's a, or is it just mental mistakes? No, I, I mean it's it's trying. You know, most of the, most of the things that I usually I can't I attribute to is that they're competitive kids and they want to make um, make plays to help out their teammates. And they think, well, if I do this, this is going to help my teammate. Where it, it's going to be something that maybe takes us out of position from being able to make a play. Um, and, and that's, and that's just, you know, that's a, that's a good buddy trying to be a good buddy type thing. Um, where if you just do what your, do what your role and responsibility is supposed to be, you, hopefully we're in a good spot. We're going to take a break right here. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about this uh, Saturday's opponent. Braves, guess what? Go on the road again. Who, who would have thought that Ottawa would be playing on the road once again? I mean, we've only had one home game so far this year, but we're going to make sure we get out on the road again. Uh, and it's in McPherson, and that's going to be a 6 o'clock kick. Yep. We'll have pregame at 5 uh, for you here on 1220 and 103.7 FM KOFO. Uh, but do want to let you know, Royals are down 2 nothing at the end of the first inning. And uh, we, we get an updated score on the uh, Burlington Santa Fe Trail game. We'll pass it along here as soon as we can. But it's time for a break. And when we come back, we will talk about the Bulldogs. You're listening to us on 1220 and 103.7 FM KOFO and KOFO.com. 
Ottawa University has positioned itself as a distinctive and rapidly expanding institution, known for its innovative educational models, exceptional value, and special ability to prepare diverse student populations for lifetimes of enlightened faith, exemplary service, inspired leadership, and personal significance. With numerous undergraduate and graduate degrees in business, education, arts and sciences, athletics, and more, you'll gain the specific expertise you need for a lifetime of significance and prosperity. Find out more by visiting ottawa.edu slash O-U-K-S. It's the perfect combination of food, fun, and football. The Kent Kessinger Show, Tuesday nights at Primetime Grill. And that combination just got even better, because now you can enjoy the show while you enjoy a blast from the past. Poncho Super Cheese or Super Chili and Cheese Burrito. That's right, Poncho Super Cheese or Super Chili and Cheese Burritos are back, and they're only at Primetime Grill on Tuesdays. Enjoy all of your other menu favorites, the full-service bar, and more at Primetime Grill, 2204 South Princeton Circle Drive. For game time and Poncho's Burritos, it's prime time. Susan, it's so great to finally be able to get together again. Oh, it sure is. And I really appreciate you picking up the bill. I'm happy to. I've got the extra cash. Since we've all been driving so much more again, I've been using GetUpside, the free gas app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the GetUpside app? Yes, up to 25 cents a gallon. Cash back every time I buy gas. Does that actually add up to anything? Some months I make 200 to 300 bucks. Wow, that's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the free GetUpside app now. Download the free GetUpside app now in the App Store or Google Play to save up to 25 cents a gallon when you buy gas. Use promo code EARN for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's up to 50 cents a gallon on your next fill up. You can cash out anytime to PayPal or an e gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code EARN for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's code EARN. The Franklin County Emergency Communications Center, Franklin County Sheriff's Office, Ottawa Police Department, and Wellsville Police Department would like to invite you to protect yourself from scams and fraud. No law enforcement agency or government entity will ever call to tell you that you have a warrant. No legitimate business or government entity will accept gift cards as payment for anything including fees, bonds, or taxes. Consider it a scam if someone you don't know is asking you to purchase a gift card and never give out any personal information. When it comes to being scammed, it is only appropriate to call law enforcement to report when you have lost property, money, or your identity has been stolen. Don't underestimate what scammers will do and say to you in order to get your information or money. When making online purchases, use caution, even when using trusted buyers or sellers. Use public parking lots or highly visible locations to exchange goods and use verified secure digital currency exchanges. Protect personal information. The identity saved could be your own. Brought to you by the Franklin County Emergency Communications Center and KOFO Radio. Uh, kids these days, with the conversations that are during the break. We were talking numbers. Talking numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Math. We're doing math. All kinds of stuff like that. You, you get that all here on the uh, Kid Kessinger Show on 1220 and 103.7 FM KOFO and KOFO.com. We are live from Primetime Grill at Fusion Alley. Sorry I got stuck there for a second, um, but I was able to knock myself back into the groove there. Uh, Primetime Grill is located at 2204 South Princeton Circle Drive here in South Ottawa. And you can come here. Enjoy delicious Kansas cuisine. And now the Poncho Super Cheese and Super Chili and Cheese Burritos on Tuesday night. So all that and more. And Coach, Coach Ken Kessinger on Tuesday night. You can't ask for anything better. I, sorry, I got distracted. I listened to that, but I got distracted. So I was watching some of the patrons, and one little kid was running around and kind of tripped. And I was like, oh, I thought I meant. It was too far away for me to dive to try to help out. But. Turf, turf monster. Kinda. It was a, it was a turf monster. I guess got in the way there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's fine. He popped right back up. What that? What an animal! On that. I'm telling you what. I'm I'm a, He's probably two. So about 16 years. We need to get him on the team. I would think so. Yeah, that's a good call. Yeah. So the Braves have McPherson on Saturday and. It's been a mixed bag for the Bulldogs. They're one and one. Uh, lot, got shut out by Bethel in the but first they game. Only gave up twenty four points yeah. too. Which which was I guess if you want to go with the old adage of uh, a victory and a defeat, I guess. But yeah. 
but 24 points against Bethel is pretty pretty solid. After last year's um, after last year's scoring, you know that they did on it. I thought that was pretty good. And they, you know, I we it's hard to get anything defensively watching Bethel's offense. Um, it's more you're more apt to see something from our defensive perspective. So our defense is going to be able to see the offense that, that McPherson is running um, a little bit better. So it's, it's, it's one of those films that it's going to serve you halfway uh, or a third, a, two, a third to two thirds because special teams could be involved with it. Um, but you can see people and, you know, how they play and if they play hard and that sort of deal. And, and it looks like they got some guys that, you know, they're going to run around and, and uh, try to be and be physical and, and offensively they they have a quarterback that uh, the kid that got hurt last year that broke his broke his femur he was back playing already got um, mad respect for him to yeah. be back that fast because um, it was in in the Tabor game last year which was early in the season like second third week of the season probably right about now um, that he he got hurt and. He was back. He got hit a little bit in the uh, end of the Tabor game, so he kind of hobbled off a little bit. So I don't know if he'll be up, but he's a really good quarterback. Pizik, I think is, uh, I don't know if I remember correctly, is his name. Yeah. And then they got um, Reed, the the running back receiver kid. That's a really pretty good player too. Well, and, and you take a look at what McPherson did last weekend over Tabor, and uh, not that Pizik wasn't. Was wasn't bad. I mean, he was he did really well, eleven to sixteen, but no touchdowns. It, they, uh, they scored on the ground. Yeah, yeah, and I mean they they're they they've been. It looks like they're they're kind of balanced um, with stuff. They like to they like to throw the ball, do a lot of mesh routes, a lot of a lot of uh, air raid style of offense, you know, for the passing game, and and then defensively they you know play a thirty four front. Um, they like to bring, you know, uh, what I would call pressures. Uh, not so much. They do br they do blitz a little bit in the 34 front. If you bring one extra guy, we call it a pressure. If you bring two extra guy, that's when you get into blitzing. Um, they do a lot of pressures. They they turn people on with uh, uh, different different guys, different linebackers coming, and then they drop coverages into it, and they play some pretty pretty basic coverages behind it so they don't get out of whack and they they do a pretty good job of it so it, i think that they're a team that that's got definitely you know some some pretty good talent that you know that we're going to have to be able to match up with and do well against calling garing and drew labber too, one of uh two of the defenders who i feel like i've been calling their name now for about seven years yeah yeah <laughs> There's a couple Garings in that area, so uh, you might you might find them. And yeah, they've got they got some kids that have been around. I don't know how many times you've called Reed's name. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Mel, is Mel, Melvin, right? Melvin Reed. Yeah. yeah, and he's he's a he's a pretty outstanding pretty outstanding player um, for them. So forty two to nine was the score, and I'm I'm looking here. Special teams played a role. They blocked a field goal and returned it for for a score. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we mentioned the running game. Uh, so, it, it, in one way, you take a look at everything, and it's kind of like a very subdued blowout, almost in a way, because offensively, you don't see one player or multiple players with huge numbers. Yeah, they were pretty balanced, um, and it looked like from watching Tabor. Tabor had some plays where they, you know, they they made some big gains, and they they were able to to do some things in both the run game and the pass game. Um, but it just didn't didn't amount to points. They ended up with nine, but there looked like there was three or four opportunities for touchdowns um, that they could have had. So. What we have to do is be able to be consistent in what we're doing, and and um, and then be able to find those ways of you know punching it into the end zone for us to be successful. Obviously, and I mean obviously turnovers are going to be a big one, but uh, again the the penalty situation is is going to be huge. Yeah, again, this knock week. on wood, we were much we've been much better with the with the turnovers. Um, 
I think we're making good, some good decisions, you know, and not forcing things. And hopefully we don't do that again, knock on wood. Um, but then at the same time, you know, defensively, we started off the season creating some turnovers and we need to do that again um, and get back, get back to going on creating those turnovers. And I, I think it's, I think a, some of it is that the guys still getting used to some of the, some of the changes defensively. And, and I just go back and I, I tell them, you know, Hey guys, you know, we were, we were great on third down in that first game. We created some some havoc. We were we were pretty basic and simple. And you guys listened to what Coach Davis was talking to you about, and you just went out and did it. Um, you know, and that's where we just I think we need to play within ourselves, play within the scheme, particularly you know defensively and offensively. I mean, you know, all the way across the board, and and continue to make plays. But I'm waiting for is. Uh, is uh, some uh, some more big plays in the special teams. You know, we started off with some blocks. Um, I'd like to see some. You know, the I hopefully we only have to kick off return one time. Yeah. You know, uh, whether it's the start of the first half or the start of the second half. But I'd really like to see. I think we got some talent back there. We get on our blocks. We've been looks like we've been close to being able to break some of those and see if we can take one to the house. I one of the. I'm trying to phrase this in a way that doesn't make me sound dumber than I normally do when I'm on the air. Um, but uh, yardage per play for 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 Ottawa offensively is is been a kind of a struggle. And uh, when you, so when you when you look at that against this McPherson defense. Are, do you see areas where you can maybe take advantage and, and, and make it easier on second and third down? Yeah, one of the things is we talked about after the game last week is that we need to be able to play ahead of the chains, not behind the chains. And the penalties got us into some positions that we were playing behind the chains. And, um, and other things did too as well. But, you know, we got to stay ahead of the chains. And the one of the things that comes to yards per play is creating big plays. In the first game of the season, first game of the season, we had five plus 20s. You know, so plus 20s are 20 or plays of 20 or more. And it could be 20, it could be 45, it could be 65, whatever it was. This, the last couple of weeks, we haven't had very many. One of the plus 20s that we had this last week was uh, a, throw, a throw by Caleb over the middle to Corral Hill. Um, and one of the things was is we had a we had a specific call on him. We thought we could get the the post on it, and the quarterback comes off the sideline and says, you know, I just was going to give him a shot, and you know, just he he swung slung it out there, and and our receiver went up and made a heck of a play for it, and we made a big play of it. And so there's there's times where you have to um, you have to understand a, 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 of the risk taking. You know, is it going to be is it a calculated risk or is it just you know blatantly just throwing it you know things to the wind um but making ta- you know calculated risks are is is about making big plays sometimes you got to take shots we um hit uh, colton davis on a seam um when gene was in, the, in there at the end of the of the game where we gained a, a good play on that one a good down the field play we just taken we took a couple shots and and uh, that's where we need to be able to have the time to be able to do it. We're going to take our final break right here. When we come back, well, we're going to say hi to some people. We decided, well, we really did decide this is just how the program was to not uh, give our hellos to people until now. Uh, so we'll do that when we uh, when we return. Uh, don't forget, uh, we will join the Royals in progress at the top of the hour. They are currently down 5 nothing to the Oakland A's. Uh, so uh, we'll join that game in progress. We'll see if we get a good old uh, old school Royals comeback or not on that one. But until then, it's the Kit Kessinger Show here on 1220 and 103.7 FM KOFO and KOFO.com. You don't have to wait for a special occasion to enjoy a leisurely, exceptional brunch. You just have to wait for Sunday. Primetime Grill in South Ottawa is serving brunch every Sunday, 10 until 2. Treat yourself to all of your breakfast favorites, plus mimosas, a Bloody Mary bar, and more. Reservations are recommended, so call 785 785- 
242-7841 to claim your table. Primetime Grill in South Ottawa. Locally owned, locally operated, and locally loved. Come in and see why. 132 conference championships, 146 NAIA scholar teams, 43 NAIA national tournament appearances, and 237 All-Americans. Ottawa University has a long and rich tradition of Braves athletes that continue to compete at the highest level of competition, utilizing state-of-the-art facilities, accomplished coaches, and a spirit that only comes from wearing the black and gold. Push yourself to limits you never imagined as a student athlete at Ottawa University. Visit ottawa.edu slash O-U-K-S. Susan, it's so great to finally be able to get together again. Oh, it sure is. And I really appreciate you picking up the bill. I'm happy to. I've got the extra cash. Since we've all been driving so much more again, I've been using GetUpside, the free gas app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the GetUpside app? Yes, up to 25 cents a gallon. Cash back every time I buy gas. Does that actually add up to anything? Some months I make 200 to 300 bucks. Wow, that's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the free GetUpside app now. Download the free GetUpside app now in the App Store or Google Play to save up to 25 cents a gallon when you buy gas. Use promo code EARN for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's up to 50 cents a gallon on your next fill-up. You can cash out anytime to PayPal or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code EARN for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's code EARN. There are no words to describe it. The isolation. The boredom. The loneliness. If you're wondering where your teenage son or daughter's spirit went, you're hardly alone. The past year has been devastating, especially for them. But here's the good news. They might just find it again, playing high school sports. Workouts that stimulate, teammates and coaches that care, the sense of belonging so many of us have been missing lately. That's what school sports are all about. The sense of achievement is real, and the camaraderie is hard to beat. Coping with uncertainty is difficult, but school sports can help the teenagers in your family start feeling like themselves again. Encourage them to give it a try. High school sports, it's so much more than a game. This message presented by the Kansas State High School Activities Association and the Kansas Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. segment of the night here on the Kent Kessinger Show, live from Primetime Grill, 2204 South Princeton Circle Drive in South Ottawa. Uh, besides great food here at Primetime Grill, if you take a look just to the north, there are doors that lead in to the bowling alley. There's also doors from Primetime Grill that lead to the bowling alley. And you can go to Fusion Alley for good, clean fun. And that's also home of the Ottawa University Braves bowling teams, bowling leagues and open bowling, all that and more. You can log on to FusionAlley.com or call 785-242-BOWL. So uh, speaking of bowling, I don't know where I'm going with that one. I just, that was really <laughs> just trying to throw strikes. So yes, we're going to, we're going to throw some strikes and say hello to uh to some people our, our usual weekly hellos i'll i'll let you kick it off this time well hello amy yes hello amy yeah oh yeah there that, you could tell i'm not firing at all cylinders this <laughs> evening uh and then to um my mother-in-law corley um, yes. and all those listening into the greater little river area um my parents that are listening at home uh hopefully they're getting it on the uh the ipad or the MacBook or the Chromebook or whatever book they're using right now. <laughs> <laughs> Lars back at the station just uh, threw out just as a Royals tie in, you know who's not throwing strikes? Jackson Kowar. So <laughs> yes, the Royals are down five nothing. Uh, so Yeah. The Millers. The Millers? Yeah. Moved to this side of the state. Moved to this side of the state so they could be closer to the show. Closer to the action. Yeah. The white hot excitement. Yeah. Or it could be to their grandchild. But, I mean, uh, just, I think it's the show. Just like that, we all want to believe everybody here tonight is here for Absolutely. the Kit Kessinger Show. Absolutely. Not the burrito. 
Oh, and then a then a birthday party too. And, and you know, a birthday party. And a birthday party. Yeah, happy birthday to the table right in front of yeah, us. Yeah. Right. But thirteen. Thirteen. 13. Yeah. You gonna sing happy birthday? No. no. Uh, okay. I did wish. I did wish. Happy oh, okay. Well, that's that's good. So, well, I yeah, I must say hello to my mom and aunt. Oh yes. You know, I miss having them come down to the show. I know. You know what they. I, they're gonna they're gonna be real angry with this one but they kind of remind me of the two old guys from the muppet show <laughs> that's kind of yeah. what i see with, with yeah. them there put them in a corner booth yeah that's good and terrible yeah. yeah uh so yes hello to them uh hello to the modem back at the station the grogan's yeah doris and jim hello hope you all are doing well uh let's see who else are and we everybody listening on the Every- world wide web and guam looking at you guam, yeah Look, always always looking at guam so uh, good opportunity for ottawa to get back on the winning track against what a, a good bulldog team and we talked a little bit about with you know the offense trying to find some momentum and and, and kind of keep some drives going what what other keys would you say for this ball game on Saturday? Well, I think that with the way that they rushed the football last week, um, and it, depending on depending on who's their who McPherson's going to have at their quarterback, because you know obviously if it's Pisic, they're going to they're going to run um, run the ball effectively, but they're going to throw the ball because he's you know in two games he's thrown it what sixty four times or something like that. I think I saw his. Uh, his uh, stats in the two games that they played so they're gonna they're gonna pitch it around a little bit he is a very 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 good quarterback solid solid kid um but if if it's their other quarterback he's a little bit more of a runner um so we got to be able to you know see the zone read the rpo game and and that sort of defensively so we got to really you know take care of you know every time you go into a game take away the run make them one-dimensional put them in bad situations where they have to play behind the chains and then the flip side for us, we've got to stay ahead of the chains. Um, continue to, you know, take care of the football. Um, really need to get our running backs uncorked. You know, this week that would be good is to be able to get our running backs, you know, going. And it was really nice. James Reader had, I think, you know, kind of hit the switch and he's back to the James Reader that we know um, from past. Came back off of an injury from last year, you know, played a little bit last year and then this year he was he was hobbling a little bit before this last week and so man that was great to see so it's nice to be able to have the uh the three-headed monster going for us he he really did look good out there Gosh, and he brought, just ran really really hard and and there's just so much talent it, it, it's got to click here before too long yeah we'd like you know i'd like to be able to do it and we got to be able to protect and we got to be able to open holes i mean you can't you you can't just you know do it all by yourself i mean you know if, if that was the case you know barry sanders teams would have won numerous super bowls right oh. um so so the thing is is you got to be able to work together and and we got to be able to continue to grow and i think that i think i feel pretty good about what we're what, how are we're progressing in some positions quarterbacks coming along that was one that you know that we were you know trying to figure out and quarterbacks coming along um the defensive line is really solid linebackers have been really solid for us so so it's just you know continuing to build and build in all the positions i'm going to ask it anyway no more than knowing that there's probably not going to be an answer still going to see a rotation at quarterback probably settle on one this week that'll get majority of the reps now um that being said like this this the last week's plan was to 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 play the second quarterback starting in the second second the second quarter just to get him a series to get a break to the uh, to the new guys and that sort of thing um that had been playing in that in that first spot um but i I think now we've gone a little bit where to where we can kind of settle um in on things hopefully hopefully you know it's it needs to be some continuity we and we've We'll focus a little bit more on two guys as we go through this week. Receiver-wise, a lot of talent there, and, and, which and, is fortunate for us too, yes. because we've had some injuries. So, um, and that have had to step in from game to game. You know, not having Jermaine this last week, Corey Jones stepped in really nicely, and he played really good for us in the first game too. So, 
and, and really it's just getting it to the getting that ball to them and letting them make something happen because uh, that's something that there's those kids can do yeah and we had some good reads you know you threw a couple screens um that did really well for us you know off the run game some of our rpo stuff was pretty good this last week as well to get the the ball into the hands of the guys and and um you know we just got to keep on developing that you know we're we're running some of our pass routes i'm not going to name them so the, if the <laughs> opponent is listening <laughs> they know what we're doing but I but, we're, some. but we're getting we're getting way more consistent at those and now we're being able to run some tweaks off of them so there's a couple of things that are still that people haven't seen yet oh Yep, the mad scientist is gonna have to do some things, I guess. I mean, is, is this a is this maybe a, a lead in to, to something to keep an eye out for? I don't know. Saturday? I don't know. Better keep a wary eye looking. Because when you when you look away, uh, something surprising might happen. <laughs> well, I was about to just make fun of myself there, but I pulled back on that one. So <laughs> I, I hit the brakes. I tapped tapped it very gently there so final uh, final few minutes here of the sh of the program uh for people who are you know for braves fans and that i, I mean it's always there's it's always a growing pro um process and it, and, and it it's tough to constantly reload but there's a lot of talent and just got to stick with these guys yeah there's a there's there's a lot of potential we'll we'll say that we're a lot of potential the talent is um poten potentially there but they got to be able to run in in within a system and that's where you kind of get you know the learning curve and once the wheels stop spinning as much the the wheels that are attached to your legs and everything like that you know those spin a lot faster so it is to be able to get that and and not do too much and understand you know at times you know you know young guys are young guys and they're going to make mistakes but get them directed like today's practice was i thought one of the better tuesday practices that we had we popped around really good matter of fact i had <laughs> this is a first i had a couple guys say it's already 6 30. <laughs> whoa as in the practice went so fast and that means that I think that they were starting to do the things, you know, go from period to period, move to move, learn to learn, and that sort of thing at a much better and quicker clip. And dare and I say, a good fun sign as a coach, yeah, and fun. Yeah, I think that they, I think that they did enjoy themselves a little bit more because they're starting to get the, the get the flow and get the feeling, and 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 they're working hard at it. And really, when it comes down deep down inside, that's the. That's the the important part is is it, it, it go out and play and have fun. Yeah, it's still a game. Yeah, for these kids, it's it's a game that they love to play and they, they go out and play it as hard as they possibly can. It, which I think we all kind of forget from time to time is it, 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 it's that's that whole thing. But you know, especially reminding them maybe to. So they're not putting so much pressure on themselves. Yeah, because there's there's plenty of stuff that's outside of outside of the sport that's weighing down on these kids nowadays. I mean, we've we've had some you know people lose some family members in the last couple of weeks um, from all different types of things. Um, we've had you know there's some kids obviously that are new to new to the program that are from out of state that are obviously more in game because it's our livelihood, but. But the kids, they still got to play it because of the love of the sport. They got to work hard. It's way harder than they were in high school, but but they need to play it because of the love. Well, Coach, thanks for joining us. We'll yep. talk to you on Saturday uh, in McPherson as we get ready for uh, the kickoff with the Bulldogs. I appreciate it. Thank you a lot. That's going to do go it. Go Braves, by the way. Oh, yes. Go, go, go Braves. Braves. So that's going to do it for the Kid Kessinger Show this week. Appreciate you joining us. We will talk to you again a week from the night from here at Primetime Grill. Thanks for listening on 1220 and 103.7 FM KOFO and KOFO.com. KOFO 1220 and 103.7 FM.